Hey there, YouTube. This is Sestri. I'm 4306. And um, sorry if I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm not feeling quite so well. But I just wanted to make this quick video. You saw the uh, the Bean MP3 player that I recently uh, made a video on. Oh, apparently that's some grease. And um, it, it's it been working well. And then all of a sudden, it stopped charging, stopped being detected over USB. So I figured the culprit was either the jack or the cable connecting the jack. And this literally took me like at least an hour, an hour and a half to get apart without damaging anything. This is like super intricate. I was actually really surprised. Unfortunately, um, I didn't record any of the disassembly, but we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how to reassemble it. So hopefully this might be a very long video. Anyway, you can see the culprit here. Is a ribbon just attached? <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't soldered on, and it wasn't anything um, with the ribbon itself. The ribbon's perfectly fine. It's just it's attached. And so I'm just going to stick it back in, basically, and put a little captain tape on there to prevent it from coming off in the future. So basically, there is one service manual that I found online for this guy, and it's from one of those kind of shady sites that um, they want to sell it to you. They You can look at it online in low resolution, but they won't actually give it to you, which is really sketch in my book because they don't own the copyright um, for this product or anything. They don't, they're not affiliated with Sony, so they really shouldn't be in my book selling a service manual that is copyrighted by Sony, but whatever. Anyway, so instead of paying for it, I thought I'd just carefully disassemble it. And there's like no other videos, no photos online of the insides of this. So I'm the first person to do this, I guess. So this is kind of where it got to be a major pain. Getting this peg back on here, there's a catch. There's like a little finger here. And this, um, this little arm has to go under that and over this peg. So we're just kind of, kind of hopefully get it semi-aligned. And then I'll use tweezers or whatever I need to kind of get it over that threshold. There we go. It's on. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of on. There's this little spring. That I'm not quite sure. I think it actually has to go over. There's a little peg here. Keep in mind this is not an exact how to do this. Yeah, there we go. So it's on the little finger there. And let's see. Yeah, okay, so now it slides freely back and forth. Okay. And this has to go kind of back like that. I took this entire mech off of it. And this has to slide in. There's two metal indentations uh, in that frame there. And the corners of this have to kind of slide into that. And there's locating holes as well. And then you just sort of press this down. Now there are two screws, which are these tiny little guys. They have to go in to secure this into the frame now. Okay. And just double checking. Really rotate. I think there is some sort of locking mechanism. So this might kind of take a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. So this arm has to go in. Has to go in like here. And there's a peg up front that has to mate with this plastic arm. It has to go in just like that. When you pull this back, it releases this swivel lock, and it inserts, and it locks again. Okay. And this arm, it's just taped down. It wasn't anything. Uh, here, let me. There we go. So there's just some double sticky tape that I uh, might have to put back on, actually. Yeah, it's no longer sticky. So let me grab some double-sided tape. I was kind of surprised that there wasn't any tape. I mean, it might have fallen off, 
I don't know. There's like bits of random adhesives and stuff that I found when I opened this up. It wasn't very clean. Okay. <laughs> Fingers are starting to get a little sweaty. So I stuck it down finally. It's there. Latch mechanism works. You can see the cable does not bind. So we're on to, uh, to move on. So we're just going to set the main board down again and get those screws back in. And let's see. Actually, before we do that, we have to put it into the bottom shell. Uh, because there are a couple screws that are kind of a bit obscured uh, once you get this main board in. And we'll get the headphone jack and the shroud located. And there is a tiny little metal piece that popped out. Gonna have to see how in the world that fits in. It appears to be have like a little metal finger catch thing. Okay, yeah, this is gonna be finicky. So I'll have to figure out how exactly here. Give me a sec. It'd be easier to disconnect this for one second. Figure out how this bracket goes in. Because it obviously has a little metal finger piece that's supposed to press on something. Okay, got it situated. It's actually supposed to go. Hopefully you can see. Move that battery tab out of the way. The little metal finger has to go towards the top. And it just kind of sits on top of the board. And when you screw it in, it'll uh, hold that in. So I'm going to put that screw in first because that's just sort of balanced on there. It could pop out again. And it sort of is a pain to locate. Once we get that in securely. Three more screws. One in the upper corner there. And there's no separate brackets except for that single one. And these screws are so fiddly. And there is a cavity underneath so if you drop a screw and it falls in you might have to take it all apart or shake it until the screw comes out again here i'm gonna do this off camera give me a second okay got that one and that was really fiddly and kind of a little bit difficult third one goes in here and it just holds actually you know what they're all fiddly <laughs> it just goes right in here there's a little divot in the metal and it just sort of pinches the shell down. The biggest part are, that makes these difficult is uh, the screws are kind of long. Sorry about that. And um, there's like nothing to hold them so they keep wanting to fall. So just snug this one up. Okay. Just make sure that this mechanism still works. There we go. And now, so we have the display, which is the same one as the MZR1, which is an infamous mini displayer, and the uh, front ribbon board here. And there's two cables for that. And that just sits on the front here. So what we are going to do first off is screw this board down um, and then plug uh, this ribbon in first. This is the USB because it has to kind of wrap around. So let's see, where did I put those screws? These are silver screws. There are two of them. One in the top corner here. And then the second one in this corner. Okay, I have both screws in. We're gonna lift the tilting bail on this if and insert the ribbon carefully. It's sort of tricky to do. There we go. When it's in enough to tilt this latch back over. 
and it's sort of weird how it sits over its own latch. That's just the way it is. Okay. And before we stick this down, we need to get the display ribbon in as well as the front control ribbon. So it's going to sit. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I didn't want to take off all the screws and take it apart. This metal bracket actually has to sit under here, so before you start screwing it together, put that on there just to make your life a lot easier. And I'm just going to tighten that one little tiny screw here again to firm up the bottom case so now this can't wiggle. So we're just going to insert this ribbon. This is very delicate, so just be super careful getting it aligned. And that should be it. And this ribbon as well for the display controls or all the control board. And we should be good to go. So now we're going to do a quick power on test. This is the battery connector. So I'm just going to. Okay, I finally got it all back together. Let's see if it powers on. Hopefully, maybe because I disconnected the battery, it might have gone into some power down. Yeah, looks like it. So it's saying it's low battery, but if I disconnect, it should boot up now that the battery is reset. And you can see it's there. And when I plug it in, there we go. It took a second, but now it connects and it does charge. So there you can see the charge indicator is going. So now USB works once again. Let's just. Yeah, so the mechanism still works. This is going to go through. I'll just let it stop and then shut off the screen. And I guess while we're waiting, I can kind of put the rest of this back together. Now, I believe this can kind of go on last. I think it's pretty much just this top shell. There is a clasp on the back here. On this section that has to fit on and that clicks and the rest kind of just fits on semi loosely the button make sure the uh, group buttons still attached and that still presses this bezel goes on with the single screw there so let's see So these two screws on the front here, these are the shallower screws, the shorter ones. Okay, and then there's two screws left, and they're both the same length, they're a little longer than the other ones. One goes right underneath the reset, the oh, hole for that. I am actually probably shouldn't do this. Uh, we should put the door on first. Because now that I think about it, once it's fully closed, we'll be able to get that door on. So here, just get a knife in here. Just going to undo the top of the case. Knife in, a dull knife, and very gently pry to separate. Okay, so now this door has to go on, like so. It would probably be easier with the USB retracted. Let's see. Yeah, there's a, a rail that the back metal part of the hinge kind of slides into. And you can tell when it's it's located correctly or not. And I'm just going to fit this on. Make sure that there's a little bit of a plastic here and there's a notch cut into it. Make sure that that clears the door so close it partially as you're finagling this back on. 
There we go. See the door is working. Just gonna retract the USB so I can get this back on comfortably. So let's see, longer screw. Put the short screw back on the front faceplate now that we don't need to open this again. And one last screw goes kind of right to open the door a little bit. Right in the corner there. Might need tweezers to locate it. Sorry if this is hard to see. This is hard for me to see. <laughs> Now, like I said, this was not an easy fix just to get to that one cable to fix USB, the uh, USB cable and whatnot. Make sure this is located correctly and it should just push on. Yeah, that seems to work. And this was just held on by double sticky tape and hopefully it sticks back on because I just kept all of it in place. And this should just kind of Press fit on there. And there you go. Hold works. Eject works. Let's just charge it up. Recognizes USB. Instantly doesn't detect data, so it instantly just goes to charging. And you can see it's charging right now. When you turn it off, it goes to access the internal memory again. And yeah, it's detecting my music. And I can click. Put this off hold, click my folders, and I can go through all my groups. There we go. So yeah, that seems to have worked. So yeah, that's a good fix. I wasn't expecting to have to do that. And I know I kept playing with this, which probably um, caused that jack to wiggle loose, but I put a little bit of uh, captain tape on it so it won't happen again in the future. And so now this fully works. That was actually really intricate. I was surprised the mechanism inside is really super convoluted. And there was, there was no documentation online for, um, let's see if radio, it'll switch. There we go. Button works. But yeah, there was no documentation online. Um, I searched, the service manual was, you can view like a low resolution version of it and search like go through page by page, but you couldn't download the PDF. The site wanted to charge you for it. So I said, screw that. And I just sort of used logic to get this open. And sorry, I couldn't show you the opening process. That was really strenuous and kind of difficult. I was worried about killing it the whole time. But hopefully um, the reassembly process, you can just use in reverse to figure out. In a nutshell, um, basically take out these two screws uh, one below the reset button, one in the corner of that hinge area. And um, very carefully, you can get your fingernail right under the edge of this and carefully lift. I used a little kind of pin tool to, to scrape the adhesive to keep it on the front part so I can remove it. There are two screws under here. After that, most of it came apart, except for there's a clasp right in here. And I just used a dull pocket knife to get in there and very carefully loosen my fingernails help to to loosen that clasp. Once you're inside, um, basically two screws holding the board on. Disconnect all the ribbon cables. There's some uh, black tape that you need to very carefully remove without damaging that. And then there was basically three screws, one under the screen, two at the top, uh, one holding a little metal bracket. Don't lose that. And once you pull that out, you can pretty much take the entire mechanism out and then get access to the bottom side where you can start taking apart the um, USB latching mechanism. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and very unique player. And I'm very happy to get this up and running again. I was worried that um, the ribbon cable was damaged. If that were the case, I would probably have to do like micro flex cable soldering surgery but luckily it was just a connector it came out and sony never put tape on it oddly enough despite every other connector having tape on it pretty much but yeah anyway this is back
good as new, and I will definitely be using this um, quite a bit. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and a look inside one of Sony's, Sony's quirkier MP3 players, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.